Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Rosham Joe Paints. As always, my name is Joe and today we are going to be delving deeper into the Indominus box set. When I started this channel, I had decided that I was going to do a few models, but then as soon as Indominus came, I was going to jump into that, paint one individual unique model from all the entire range on both sides, both the Necrons and the Space Marines. And I wasn't going to stop until I was done and then I could move on to other things. So with that said, let's get into it. <laughs> And now for something completely different. Okay, so what we have here obviously is not part of the Indominus box set, but it is still a Necron and it's still one of the new Warhammer 40k ones and it was just too good to pass up, which is what everyone in the world said, which is why there was uh, barely any of them out there. And um, I think something like, uh, at least on, on Games Workshop site, I went on there to see how many were available and it was like, oh, I could, I could order it. Sure, it's not out of stock, but it did say something like it would ship in 32 days or something really odd and I, just on the off chance, decided to go up and visit my local uh, Games Workshop uh, store, which is actually not local at all, but you know, 25 minute drive or 25 mile drive up there and back. And uh, because of the current conditions, I wasn't allowed to browse, but hey, at least I called ahead. I didn't call ahead, but overall they did have one. In fact, they had two. And so I am the proud owner and uh, now I have to paint them, which is fun. So I'm going to. Now, uh, when you are assembling this model, you get the choice between uh, two different heads. There is uh, this head, which I have chosen, and then there's also one that has, I think, three eyes. I don't know where I put it. I saved it, I clipped it off, and I'm going to paint it if I ever find it, just because, you know, why not? But uh, the main difference on these two is the guns. So you have this, this gun, which is called the something or other, which I don't actually know. Um, this, I believe, is the single shot that does a ton of damage but if you miss, womp womp. Um, the second one you get is more, it's a blast weapon and it's a lot cooler looking in my mind. And um, you get a lot of shots, but not a lot of damage. So pick your poison when you're assembling it or um, follow one of the uh, many, oh boy, it's all going downhill now. It's, it's been a while and it's already going downhill, which makes sense. Um, but there's a lot of, uh, there's a couple other I'll, maybe if I find the links, I'll put them down below. Uh, there's guys who have done uh, magnetizing of this, and I decided not to simply because it's not magnetized right now, and I can actually... <laughs> Future Joe will come in, I'm sure, in any second now and talk about how you should magnetize it or else you'll end up breaking the arms off, but... <laughs> Um, these are all push to fit models. So what I have done is I'm kind of just, I rotate this one out. This arm lays, um, lays down and moves out of the way. It's like in a ball joint. And then this kind of pivot down very gently and then, uh, pull this side, uh, straight forward as you knock that piece off. I told you it's all downhill from here. Um, but Hey, thanks for joining me. I know it's been, um, 642 days since I last made a video. It might be an over-exaggeration, but um, then drop it on there uh, on the table. And then when you pick it up again, put the other piece back in the same way you just did it. Now, um, there is a caveat, or not a caveat, there is something you need to do in order to make this happen. And I will, there, that, as soon as you take that piece off, it gets a lot easier. Um, so there you go, one, two, three pieces back in. And then there is this uh, rat tail looking piece back here that plugs in right here. Now you could magnetize these parts, parts. You could magnetize the parts. Um, I'm not going to, and I don't play a lot. So realistically, once I paint this up and put it like this, I'm going to leave it like this. Maybe I'll put the armor back on. Um, but uh, I'm just going to leave it like that. And there we go. Uh, the other thing you can do to make this a more, uh, more custom build, if you will, is um, you can put these pieces on this way. Um, which is backwards. And I had tried to assemble this a bunch of times and I could not figure out why these two little holes weren't lining up when I put this in like this. And I just could not figure it out. And I went and took a look at the picture and it's because it actually goes on this side. Uh, and lo and behold, watch this. You put this in there and 
Well, you don't put it in there. At some point when you get it in there, and hey, they line up now. Go figure, you put it together right and it works. Um, so you can put it together either way. It's kind of like my dreadnought. You can put the backpack thing on upside down and no one will ever know unless they've built it or have looked in pictures or just can see that it doesn't look right. So uh, final thing I do want to mention for the assembly portion, uh, they give you a bunch of bits that you can put on here to fill these two little holes that are here. It's a nice big base. I don't like this so far only because um, I feel like that's gonna, that, that peg right there is gonna break off at any point. Um, and now I've, I've been talking for five and five, it's, I'm truly back. I'm five minutes of having even painted on a program named after me and then paints. But um, when you are assembling these, so these are fully glued together already. If you wanted, you could go back and like I said, add a little magnets, but follow the other guy's tutorials. Look for like locust, 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 <laughs> locust. You know what? It's a locust from now on. Um, look for that. Uh, on YouTube and magnetize or something like that. You'll find uh, a couple different videos by some guys who know way more about Necrons than I do. Um, good guys. So, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, anyway, in here, uh, you'll note on, you won't note because I covered it back up, but basically on the hand, there is a, uh, a concave portion that is, a, that is there to help you place the gun. And these normally would have, I'll get it really close, um, two, two balls that pop out like that. And you just cut those right off, uh, your standard Bob Barker type of situation. But um, you cut those off and then it slides in and out just fine. So that is the only modification I had to make to the gun. And then I was able to glue it together and, um, and you know, there you go. One off, two off, three off. This one's a little more tricky because you got the back piece. But there you, there you go. There you Like I said, there you go, really easy. Um, you'll note that even though this gun is together, uh, this spins around and it's, I'm sure it's gonna be a lot of fun to paint. Um, but that way, you, you don't even need this if you don't want, you could just cap it off if you wanted to and the gun would look like that and it would still look good. Or um, you could pop a magnet here, pop a magnet there, do whatever you want. Um, because like I said, I don't, I don't see myself switching this very often. It's gonna sit on a shelf probably for the rest of its life. But hey, it'll get joined by the other one I have up there. Um, I think that's it. The last, actually, you know what? No, one, one other thing, since I'm already gone almost seven minutes, um, maybe I'll put a, a link at the beginning to get to the actual point. Um, but when you are assembling this, so head comes off here. And of course I, you know, I, I do everything in sub assemblies cause I want to be able to paint everything. I might, now it doesn't want to come off great. Um, there we go. Uh, I may just do like the top half and the bottom half and then slam it all together. But you'll see because you're here to watch that. Um, but when you're putting this piece together, the shoulders and the spine need to go on at the same time because this, this point right here uh, underneath the neck needs to actually slot in under, the, ah! needs to slot in uh, yeah, right above that. You see that? I have for the longest time was trying to figure out why it would not line up properly when like this. Cause it's like, it looks like it works. I don't get it, but there are two little holes there. And basically this has to go aim down and then it gets pushed in and then it fits nicely or else your head will be fitting way too far back. All right. That was eight minutes. Actually, I... technically it was not eight minutes cause I had a little bit at the beginning, but you know what? Hey, Bzzz. welcome back to my videos. It's good to be back. First thing I'm going to do, Prime it in Chaos Black. You know what that looks like, so I'm not going to show you it, but I'm going to come back. We'll get started with some Lead Belcher. So there you have it. The whole model together and ready to go. Minus the head because it... I have no idea where it went. I will probably find it in a few months when I'm going around. Luckily, they included two heads in this kit or else I would... I don't know. I'd probably grab a Necron Warrior and pop a head off that, and then he could walk around without a head, and it would be kind of... No, I'm not going to do that. Anyways, point is, they had two heads, so I'm going to use the backup head, so that's what we're going to use. First step uh, after is to decide, hey, what are we actually doing? And that is to show you, um, obviously, this is going to be a sub-assembly, these two we weapons here. We'll put those aside for now. Um, this piece just press fits into the back here, so uh, I'm going to use that. This piece up front is the the chest is two pieces and they clamp around the uh the spinal cord so it's kind of a pain in the butt to put them together um so 
you press the arms into the back piece and then press the chest and back to clamp around the spinal cord. So I decided that that was just going to be one piece because I can hit a lot of that and some of it's going to get covered up by a, a gigantic gun anyway. Uh, then you've got the two armor pieces, the, the overall back shoulder blades, the one arm which just pops into place, and a couple other pieces here which can just pop into place really simply. So, And then of course the head which keep an eye on it because um, it, it um, it's really tiny and it rolls around. So first thing we're going to be doing is, as always with most of my Necrons, we are going to be putting on some Lead Belcher. Lead Belcher is just going to be a simple base coat. I'm going to put it on all of the pieces that I want to be silver, which is a, uh, actually in this model, it might not be the majority, but I'm, I'm thinking it's probably still almost the entire, ooh, the entirety of it. So um, we're going to come back and paint that green later, so don't worry about hitting it right now. And a lot of this will get covered up. Um, so you don't have to be, you know, perfect in here or anything like that. You know the drill. So uh, paint up the... Ooh, do I want to make those gold? Do I want to make any of this gold? I'm going to have to show you a picture of what it looks like when I'm done. Um, so let me show you something I knew I was going to be silver. It's an arm. This arm's going to be... Ooh, do I want to make this arm orange? No, I want to make it silver. Anyways, point is, paint your silver. You could do a dry brush here. Uh, I've done that on my Necron Warriors. I'm going to do a um, like a full layer and then hit it with some Agrax Earthshade. And then we'll come back and do a, a dry brush of um, Rune Fang later. But for now, decide what you want to be silver and paint it silver. All right, let's go ahead and do a little bit of just Agrax Earthshade along all of those recently painted lead belcher portions to get the metal looking nice and, uh, you know, dingy, dirty, grimy, you know, and, uh, and all that fun stuff. I'll probably just do Agrax Earthshade instead of doing Agrax and Nolan Oil like I've done in the past. And then after a dry brush, we'll get to pick out some of these portions and a little bit of green, so. But first, we shade. And then after we shade, we shade more pieces because there was more, I think I said, uh, I didn't think the silver was the majority and I don't know what I had in my, my head. I don't know what model I was thinking of. Um, Cause yeah, it turns out silver is definitely still the majority of this model. So a lot of silver to shade. And then, uh, and then after we do some dry brushing and make all that dirtiness look a little bit cleaner again, uh, then we get to move on to, uh, to the other portions. So and we'll finish this up, let it dry, move on to the next portion. All right. With Agrax Earthshade complete, we are now going to paint uh, with a dry brush here and hitting all of the silver portions we just painted uh, or just shaded down or whatever we just did to them. We are going to now paint with some Rune Fang Steel, a very light dry brush just to try and catch most of the edges of all of the metal. Um, obviously, you can be messy with this step, but you know, do try to just hit the portions you're actually looking to hit with the dry brush um, just to make sure that uh, that they all get enough coverage to make you to get that look that you're looking for. Don't come in too uh, too excitable, too fast, and just you know you're looking to dust paint back onto a model, if that makes sense, uh, rather than uh, at least that's what I consider I'm doing. I like to pretend this is some uh, fine work of art, and I'm just dusting off lightly. Uh, which is what's making it look cleaner. At least when I use the silver, it's kind of what it feels like. Just as I go back and forth here, the little edges clean up. I don't need to be painting this piece. In fact, I'm probably gonna have to cut some paint out of there. Now, you can see a spot here actually of the, um, you see it right there? I'm trying to interrupt myself before I get too lost. Um, that's some agar earth shade that pooled. Now, all I have to do is just go back and forth just to, just to get rid of the you don't need to, I, or I'm not looking to get rid of it all. Just get rid of enough of it that it doesn't appear that a drop of paint stopped there and just, you know, pulled up. Now that's also going to get covered up by a gigantic gun right here. So we may not need to worry about it all that much, but you know, the, the better, the better, what is it? The more I'm going to go with the more time you take to make the every step look better than the better the final product file that under duh anyways 
I don't know, I thought it was going to be really, really prophetic right there, and it just came out mostly pathetic. So anyways, ah, uh, and then I stopped paying attention to where my hand was. Anyways, dry brush. It's easy. Do it. You'll like it when you're done. You know, or if you want, you can, I'm going to, I'm going to dry brush. This is how I paint. But if you would like to highlight every single one of these, or man, bless your heart, if you want to do some non-metallic metals on every single, uh, every single section of this, have at it. Uh, I think I would love to try that someday, but to me, you know, that's got to be, that's got to be something that you're submitting in a, in a contest or something like that. That's not something you're, you're just, you know, going to put in a display case, um, to sit for the next 50 years. I mean, hey, maybe you are, you know, be like, Hey, little Joe, I painted this 50 years ago. And they'll be like, why isn't it a hologram? I'm like, you know what? You dang kids. And you anyways, all right, you, you go to the next section. I'll be here dry brushing the rest of these pieces. Once the dry brushing of Runefang steel is complete, I'm going to go in and do a, uh, a non dry brushing, just a, a base coat of Abaddon black over all the portions that I want to be black. Now, some of these are already black because of the spray paint, but I'm going to go over them anyway um, so that it's all the same sheen, um, you know, Martin, Charlie, or just in general, your. Um, not glossy versus matte, you know, you want, you want it to look the same. And also, uh, because I've heard, um, that the, um, Abaddon and Chaos Black are ever so slightly different. So if you did need to do a, did need to do, um, if you did need to do a touch up or two, you would want to make sure that, um, you started with the same color so that you don't end up, um, basically drawing a whole brand new black color over a different type of black. So, but this is just going to go on all of the pieces and all of the areas that you want black, which includes things like the, um, <laughs> good block of that. Um, this right here, the, the back of the, uh, or the, the chest, the icon on the chest. Um, I did these two ends here on what is kind of like a piston. I don't know if I'll even see that when I'm done. Um, I started on the other half of this gun so that I can show you quicker. And that is basically the casing over here, as well as doing the, uh, the center pipe, um, which needs another coat or six. And that is for, um, cause it looks a lot like actually like the, um, well, cause this, uh, this is actually the Goss something. Ryan Gosling. No, it's not him. Similar to the Necron Warriors, um, this is just like a large version of it, or at least that's what it looks like as far as the design goes. So I'm making that too black is my whole point behind that. And then the other one of note is, um, is the other weapon option. And that again is going to be, um, I painted these armor panels, which are kind of on top of the guns as well as this, and then the little canisters here, but not the little canisters there. And if you ask me why, I'm going to just pretend I didn't hear you because I don't know why I painted them and not there because it seems like you should but then I feel like it'd be too much black so maybe that's the reason I don't know did I paint anything else black nah I think that's it I think that's all the black parts so there you go I'm gonna go finish that up and then uh and then we will highlight with a little bit of either dry brushing to make it quick or maybe just go straight to Dawnstone we'll see let me finish the uh, Abaddon black and then I'll find out All right, so the next step I'm going to do now that the Abaddon Black is done is I am going to start with a little bit of Eschen Gray uh, on all of the edges and then decide whether or not I feel like I want to continue with Eschen Gray or if I want to just skip straight to Dawnstone. And I already feel like I'm going to end up skipping straight to Dawnstone because I'm not really, I don't know. I don't know how I'm feeling about that. Let me put some Dawnstone next to it. This is the constant struggle if anyone has watched any of my other Necron videos is do I just go straight to Dawnstone because it's a nice, it's a much better contrast or do I try and do the Eschen Gray because, you know, it's the right thing to do, but I feel like, you know, I feel like pausing what I'm saying because I'm trying to concentrate on painting. So there we go. I don't know. I feel like I'm just going to skip straight to Dawnstone. 
You can't probably tell from up there anyway. You know what? Uh, you do you. I'm going to do Dawnstone because that way at least I can see, even if you can't see it on the camera, at least I can see what I'm doing on the model itself. So I'm going to do that. There's some, there's some parts in here that are actually... Um, wow, did anybody have that helicopter? Flies over every night. It never helps paint. Um, but uh, there's a couple parts in here that have like battle damage or time-worn damage or whatever you want to call it. And um, I think with a dry brush, it would be you know a lot easier to get those. Let me can you see what I did. Ah oh, man, I'm just gonna tell you that I did it and not do anything. Eh, I'll finish it up. I'm just gonna do it off camera because it's not that exciting. Uh, next, after that, you're gonna be done with black, and we can start putting on um, I don't know, probably some of the greens. Maybe start assembling some of this. How about that? Sound good? I don't hear any nose, so let's do it. So after uh, trying to line the other one really, really nicely, I decided that it would be just easier to, to dry brush. And let me show you what I mean. A um, little, little bit of paint here, a little bit of Dawnstone, and just look at that. We're already done. I'm not even going to finish. So um, so there you go. Multiple ways you can do it. You can either do um, edge highlighting with Eschen Gray and then edge highlighting with Dawnstone. Or you could just be, you know, like me and say, you know what? That's good enough. As you get the lines pulled out there, it makes it look a little dusty, I guess. But just be careful when you're near the um, the gray bits. Not the gray bits, the silver bits. Um, you're making gray bits. But be careful when you get near the silver just so you're not um, uh, making that less, less silver and more Dawnstone. So, um, so there you go. And then if you want, if you're getting... You know, you want to get multiple angles. You could always just go in here and lightly circle, circle motions. You know, you'll, you'll figure it out as you go. I hope to, to one day figure it out myself. But I uh, figured this part out, and this part is I'm going to highlight all of the Abaddon Black with a dry brush of Dawnstone. And then I will move on to some green, and I will continue my love-hate relationship with highlighting black on Necrons for whatever reason. So... There you go. With all of the black portions finished and highlighted, we are now going to paint the armor. And you'll note that this side is actually already painted and this side is not. And that is because I just talked for like five or 10 minutes, um, but I, had, I hadn't recorded anything. Um, I just kind of, I took a picture instead of hitting the record button on my, uh, on my camera phone here. And so, so yeah. You're welcome, because I, I, you don't need to listen to the rant that it was, because I, I was questioning, not reality, but, you know, why I would paint something Caliban green when I, I obviously know the answer. Um, so, maybe, maybe we all need to just think about, no, just me. I'll, I'll question my own reality. Anyways, getting, getting lost again. So, Caliban green over the armor pieces, as well as any of the hose pieces, any of the orbs. Let me show you real quick where I put it on the body. Um, this is actually the Caliban green done with uh, known oil over the top on all of the armor pieces. I'm going to put known oil over the Caliban green to darken it up and then I'll come back and do my little dry brushing of warp stone. Uh, the orbs as well as all the the weapon effects, basically anything that's going to get like a glowing effect. You can see I popped a little bit of Caliban green on all the orbs there in the center and then back over here in the pipe. Any of those things uh, I'm not going to end up putting the known oil on just because there's no need to. So same thing here. We got all these can all these rods, as well as canister centers. This little orb here, and all these guys over there. And then what you missed out on uh, in my other segment that I forgot to record was I actually lost this head uh, for a few seconds, and I panicked because that's that would be two down. Luckily, I have one more box, so I could make it happen, but uh, I'd rather just not lose them. Anyways, here it's going to be the same thing where I put a little bit of green on the hose and do the eyes in green, and then. That should be that. So I'm going to finish this up. I'm going to put known oil over the armor pieces, but I won't record that. And then we will come back for the dry brushing portion of Warpstone over the Caliban Green. So I realized in my last section uh, of dry brushing, I may have um, just kind of skipped over the entire process of dry brushing. So what I wanted to show you is how to go ahead and do that. So the depending on the amount that you're going to be wasting, um, just you know, choose the appropriate size brush. And then because you want a dry brush, dip it into your paint, then realize 
the mistake you've just made and immediately start painting whatever you would like onto uh, your closest piece of paper. And once you feel like you've painted, you know, a pretty cool, like a comet or you know something pretty cool, um, make sure just to dust any paint that you have left over off onto your model, um, just to make sure that the brush is nice and clean for your next, um, you know, again, comet or asteroid or, you know, smear of ketchup that you brushed off your shirt because you don't actually know how to eat properly as an adult, but I'm not bitter. Um, anyways, the, uh, the idea here is, look, you can see it catching on all the little raised action sections, um, but you know how to dry brush, right? If you don't, don't want, don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but what I'm doing here is I am just trying to make this part, which was um, very darkened down by the Caliban green and the Nolan oil. And I just want to go over and I'm using circular motions to hit all of the, um, all of the sections from all angles, if that makes sense. It should make sense. Um, and then turning the, turning the piece and going around because I kind of want a, a, like a dusty coat of this um, Warpstone Glow uh, without just having it overpower everything. What I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to come in here and do either a, another dry brushing of um, this time Moot, this time Moot Green um, or I have a cold, leave me alone. Um, but uh, either Moot Green that is, and um, do it again, or uh, I might even just do, instead of a dry brush, doing an actual edge highlight um, throughout. We shall see. I may also come in and paint the insides of this uh, black, just because then when I come back over with the silver or the gold later on, it'll stand up that much more. So, but this is really all I'm looking for here, because again, all of these edges are gonna get hit with moot green. So I really just wanted to make, where'd be able to go? Um, let me show you the two in comparison here. Um, just to, to make it slightly less just blackish green uh, and to shine it up just a little bit. And then again, once we put the moot green on here, it's gonna, it's gonna just pop. So, so there you go, that's how to dry brush. I'm sure you already knew that, but it was, you know, made me feel good to tell you, so yeah. Okay, so welcome to the part of the video where I attempt to do uh, much better, um, not in painting or in focus, but um, I noticed as I was editing the rest of this video that I kept smacking my lapel mic, which was making a really annoying noise. So sorry for the first 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, but hey, you know, that and, and this, I had a lot of this going on where I basically just was covering up the model and painting. So I will attempt, and you know my attempts, they're just attempts, but uh, I will attempt to uh, not do that. Anyways, so here is Warpstone Glow. So we are going to put Warpstone Glow. We did the um, dry brushing already, but now we did layer and I just added a layer to all of these little dots in here, as well as the insides of this. And then I actually, this time, instead of just doing the entire, um, this entire piece, I left this, if you want to, if you can believe it or not, this is actually Caliban green, but it looks like black. Um, and I painted inside and I'm going to highlight inside. So that way it looks like the glow is coming from inside the, the call is coming from inside the house. No, the glow is coming from inside the weapon. Um, so that's that on both sides. The, this piece here only actually has a little hose at the bottom. Um, and then of course the icon. So I'll move those aside. Uh, nothing on the spinal cord. And then I've got this little carousel of, uh, of fun here. There is the head with the three eyes and the hose, the orbs that are here. And again, I did, I did end up putting black in here so that when we highlight later with some gold, it'll look, uh, it'll look nice. And then I did, I don't know what these are. These are like supports that go to the sides that actually hold like here. Oh, that's backwards, but you get the idea. Um, and these two actually get glued on, but then this is just kind of floating. So I was like, well, man, I'll make it a, a glowy orb thing. Uh, and then of course I painted this and I'm going to try to do this differently on my cataclysm. I, or no command barge, whatever it is. Um, the engines actually have up. Uh, there's the, there's the paintbrush again. <laughs> this is going to be difficult. Um, on this, I painted this like white on the inside and did like a glow of, um, uh, warp stone. Nope. Weight watcher green. Um, this time I'm actually going to try to leave it black and just do a super glowy orb on the outside and see how that turns out. Cause I like to make my life harder. You know, it's already been like 45 days. Um, 45 days. I wish it was only 45 days. It's been, 
I think over 60 days at this point since I last did a video. Um, and it's been three minutes or so, maybe two minutes since I started this section and haven't painted anything. So did I hit the lapel mic that time? Maybe we'll find out. Find out when I go to edit it. You guys found out a second ago. Okay. So in, uh, I'm going to use this gun because there's a ton of the green details here. So use a very thin brush and I'm going to put a little bit of green in every single one of these, uh, what I like to consider canisters. And here goes the heater. So if you can't hear me in a second, assume that I said something amazingly astounding and it blew your mind. Um, also, uh, same thing, we're gonna go and do a bunch of little, um, we will do a lot of uh, layers, there we go, that's the word I was looking for, of the um, Warp Stone Glow in here. Um, this side, if you want to try, I mean, like, I tried to get, like, just like run a line straight down here but for the most part, I just focus on going back and forth. And now that I'm out of paint, of course, my prep work is amazing. <sighs> by, by episode 19 or so, I'm sure I'll have remembered something. Um, so what I'm doing on these, and you know, I'll just show you on the other side. Um, Cause hey, look, it's all done. Looks nice. Since I haven't figured out whether I want to do uh, moot green as a dry brush or as a layer, I'm going to start on the parts where I know I'm going to want it as a layer. So that would be all of the hoses. So down here, not covering up all of the warp stone, of course. Uh, and then I'm going to do at the very ends of this, uh, the, um, what do you call this thing? The symbol, the Necron icon. So uh, I'm going to do that and then try and go around just the points of it, not the inner circle. So like that. Um, so that would be the moot green on just the body portion, body portion done. And um, we can end there. We don't have to look at anything else. And all right. So I started this and you can see, we can't just end there because there's so much more moot green. Um, these three circles, uh, these orbs are getting a little bit of moot green. The way that I'm doing these is I'm using a thinned down obviously, um, not straight out of the pot, a little bit of moot green. And I'm starting in the center and building my way out towards the actual, um, downward curvature. And then if I go too far, which I do a couple times, go back and get some warp stone glow again, thin down. And you can see like barely anything on my brush. Can you see there's barely anything on my brush? Wow. There's barely anything on my brush. Anyways, um, it's there though. And then you just kind of get yourself down here into the cracks and see how I'm covering up part of that moot green I just painted. That's fine. Cause that's going to make a, a better, uh, gradient transition. So, um, let me keep that in focus. So, uh, I'll put it on the dots here. I'll put a little bit on the hose as well. And it's going to be, you know, leave the warp stone glow uh, on the very tops. And just, I'm going to cover that moot green down more like this. For these, I actually, uh, for the things you couldn't see because my hands were in the way. For these right here, um, so I had already painted the, war the Warp Stone Glow inside the cracks. And what I did with the Moot Green this time is I went and did kind of like the same, same process here. Instead of adding it through the entire line, I just put it on, there's like, um, can you see it if I hold it this way? Eh, if you were holding it, you'd find out. But basically there's a slanted line down this way, and then there's a hard angle here, and then it's... A straight line down that way. So I tried to just do it at the very meeting of where that, uh, that hard angle is. So, um, we got that. And then we are going to do obviously the orbs on the armor. Um, we're going to do this piece. And I but wait, there's more. Um, I got to figure out, I think I did a little bit of a, an edge highlight on the armor panel because this is where you would need to come in. And I do, mm -hmm. uh, I do like how it looks. I don't know if it's enough green yet or too much green, but I think um, I, I was saying earlier that I hadn't decided whether I wanted to do a dry brush or not. And realistically though, the reason I wouldn't want to do a dry brush is just because I like the, the green color I have going with the dry brush of the Warpstone Glow over the Nolan Oil over the Caliban Green. So I don't think I want to come back and make it even brighter. So I think I'm just going to continue on suffering through edge highlighting the, the most of this, including all of the little battle, battle damage, time worn, time worn damage type, uh, type deal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go cover all of this with a bunch of moot green, 
Then I'm going to take a complete left turn at Albuquerque and go to Gold so I can assemble most of the rest of the model. Um, and, uh, and then we'll come back and do the, the glowing effect to finish up. So, all right. It was a lot. There's a lot of moot green going on. And I'll be back uh, once it's done. All right, with the moon green basically done, I think I got to go back and touch up a couple other areas. Um, but, you know, I got a little bit of a glow going on. I did the base here uh, in lots of gray astro granite and a little bit of stone piece there and blah. But that's not the point. The point is, hey, look, there's a, a nice glow, green glowing orb. I tried to keep the, uh, the parts where it's contacting the metal uh, just shaded slightly. So that's a little bit of moot green uh, blended in. So liking how that looks, uh, you know, got the guns all painted up and all that. So let's paint a little bit of Retributor armor. Now we're going to paint this, make sure it's not too watered down. Cause if it's too watered down, it'll just run. Um, but so we're going to paint this along the, uh, symbols here that are in, uh, on the armor pieces that are around. Well, I was going to say his legs, but I, he doesn't actually have legs. This is almost could be considered his legs. Like this, this right here covers over the, uh, the jets that, uh, keep him afloat, it afloat, whatever, whatever this Necron used to be. Cause I think that's in the lore. So anyways, so I'm going to go do that for the whole thing. You can see it's, it's nice and shiny. Um, it's nice and blurry. It's, it's actually a lot more clear in real life. Uh, the other pieces that, hang on a second, I gotta... Oh, it's a fearsome cold. Okay. All right. So other pieces that we have that are going to be gold, uh, that are going to be painted in the Retributor armor are going to be, I'm going to do the spine because that's kind of what I'm doing with all of my South Tech guys. So mainly these uh, portions that stick up you actually want a good amount of paint, more so than none, on your brush. Uh, so these spines that stick up and then the, the round pieces. But there is some piece here, like this, uh, this part that's in lead belcher. So I'm going to try to avoid that and just go in right here. And remember, most of this, I don't need to worry about all that much because it gets covered up. So I'm not going to spend too much time, but this whole piece is going to get painted as well. Aside from the, there's that big opening right here that the gun goes into. So we'll probably go around the edge here, but not put anything inside so that it actually uh, can still fit in there quite nicely. Now, the last portion, let me switch back to, swip, switch back to my other brush uh, real quick. And that last section is the face. Now on the face, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other destroyers, um, which is paint like again, kind of like from the back of the head all the way forward and around the eyes and all that stuff, like that white uh, mask type of effect. Um, but I'm also gonna paint, since he's got a nice armor plate right here, I'm gonna paint this part gold. And so I think that'll actually, um, it, it will make this a unique looking uh, model as because he doesn't have enough going for him already that makes him unique. So, you know, gotta add a little bit more uh, little more flavor into the mix. Now I already painted these eyes green, so I'll try not to hit them as I paint this, but if I do, that's an easy touch up. So, so yeah, so that's going to be gold. And then we'll do, we'll bring some white into the face as well. Uh, so let me get all these pieces of gold and then we're going to shade over all of the gold with Agrax earth shade. So it will be a, a duller, uh, gold versus a, a bright gold that you would get with like Seraphim sepia or Reichland flesh shade. So paint the golds, and then uh, wash, and then I will, uh, and then I'll, I'll go to sleep because I need to rest. Apparently I have cold. So, all right, let's do that. You can already see I got one layer on there, but I am going to go do a second layer of Celestial Gray. This is for the headpiece, and we're going to try to follow the lines. Oh, I guess that's not the headpiece. It is the face in general. We're going to try to follow these lines and uh, just pick out parts that we want. I did this, like I said, on my other destroyers, so I like it. So do this, and then we're going to follow this up with some uh, Ulth One Gray. Okay, now that that uh, took all of 10 seconds, let's go ahead and do the uh, Ulth One Gray next. Now this is going to brighten up, 
make it a very light color. Try not to get anything into that crease you already made over there. But if you do, that's fine. We can always clean that up later with some uh, Nellen oil. But we are going to cover that Celeste Gray now with Ulta One to make it nice and uh, just bright, stand out a lot more. You can see the, I think it's a pretty cool look for a head. And then uh, we're not even done with the highlights yet. So we will definitely make this, uh, this guy stand out, you know, unlike his two gigantic guns that he, he, he floats around with. So, all right, so there you go. There's the head. Now I'm gonna come back and do, you know what? Why don't you just hold on like a couple seconds? It doesn't take that long to dry. So I'm just gonna sit here and uh, maybe I'll look at the camera, you know, talk to uh, talk to the one person a week who watches these things, but that's fine. Cause I'm probably watching it once a week. Cause uh, you know, helps me remember what I did when I go to paint the next knock on, neck on. Anyways. Uh, so with that done, we will now go ahead and actually do a little bit of uh, white scar. The white scar is going to be for just the very edges. And the reason I do this, I know there's no real, there's like a hard edge here, but the reason I do this is because I'm going to come back as well and do some Abaddon black on the other side, which makes it really kind of pop out um, and look like it is a, uh, like I said, like an extra piece of armor that actually got put on top of his face instead of just, you know, war paint or whatever it actually is. I'm just I'm like, no, I'm playing dress up. Just playing pretend here. So there you go. So there's that. Um, it's always a struggle when it comes to the teeth. And the reason is I don't want to fill his mouth with paint and have to go back and do that. But I tell you what I'll do. I barely have any paint on this brush right now. So I'm going to try to just, to just this. And if I make contact, it's a bonus. If I don't, that's fine like that. So there you go. So there is the face. I'm going to come back. Actually, no, I'm not going to come back. I'm still right here. Stick with me and get a little bit of black on the brush get it to a very fine tip. And then, like I said, I like to see my work that I'm working on. I'm trying to look at the camera while I do this so that I know when it's super blurry like that, I can tap and shake the camera a few times. Then gyroscopically position my fingers so that they rotate. Anyways, um, but yeah, so now I got the little black there. Hopefully it didn't dry out my brush already. And we're going to come back and do a line over the white, apparently, where I didn't want it. And then we're going to go clean that white up again. This is still too thin, so let me try that again. I'm going to come back. And like I said, first, make sure it's, uh, there you go. Okay, in frame. And yeah, like I said, just tracing a line along the outside edge of that, uh, that white, including down here. Oh, this is hard to see. I don't know if it's easy to see on camera, but I'm having a hard time seeing it. As long as somebody can see it and they can warn me. If I'm doing it wrong, that would be great. And then why not, hey, on the bottom of the chin too. So with that, I don't know if that translates well. I'm moving my hand. It's going to focus, focus, focus. Tap again, tap, and move the fingers. Perfect. Um, so there you go. So now it actually, to me, <laughs> after all that, it's just to me. Hey, but you know, you're painting for yourself. So um, I feel like that makes it almost look like I said, like, a, like there's a shadow underneath it so that it's sticking up a little bit more. So I'm going to come back. And uh, I think that's the only white part on the entire model. So, hey, the whites are done. Congratulations. Uh, next piece will be probably adding a little bit of um, highlights to the gold. I can put those pieces together, put the, ma the main body together, and then it's just, uh, I think it's just yellows at this point. So let's go do that. After the shade of Agrax Earthshade has dried, I would then go in with a little bit of Liberator Gold and try to knock my piece off of the sticky tape as I am using that to edge highlight. Um, this is pretty simple. Uh, just using the side of my brush, maybe 25 to 50% of the way up um, to try and just catch the edge as best I can. But with Liberator Gold, you may or may not see it. It's one of those paints that I feel like you you use the same paint and the same brush and it comes out a hundred times, different a hundred times. Um, but I think the reason behind that is that, um, you know, it's, it's, 
it separates so quickly in the pot. Like when you, if you don't use it for a couple of like days, you'll start seeing like the orange, orange move to the top and then the, uh, the obviously the pigment settle at the bottom. That has nothing to do with what I was thinking, but um, I was gonna go with, um, it's one of those paints that you think you don't have enough and then all of a sudden it's too much. So, you know, I try to be sparing with this, knowing that also after this, I'm gonna highlight with another color on top of this anyway, um, for the tops up here. So for most of these, you know, I make a quick pass and then I'm like, eh, whatever, doesn't matter and hit it anyway. Um, for larger surfaces, again, I'm just trying to almost catch just the raised portions as if I'm dry brushing it um, so that I don't have to do too much focus because this is not going to be something that anyone really stares at for a very long time, um, unless you're painting it at the time, in which case you're probably staring at it for quite some time. So paint it uh, very good and tell, tell whoever, you know, make sure, show some love to the person who painted it. Um, which is again, going to be you, you know, got to, I was going to go into after school special of, you know, loving yourself before, uh, for anybody else. But that sounds more like an airplane thing. You got to help yourself before you can get everybody, help yourself before you can give anyone else a mask. That's actually really good life advice. I feel like this video took a turn early on and it just, it hasn't quite, um, recovered. It wasn't like it, it got stuck turning. It just, you know, it took a turn. And, and veered off, you know, and, um, and I'm okay with that because, because that's who I am and I've, and I've got my mask on <laughs> anyways. All right. Point is, um, liberated gold. Like I said, don't use too much. At least I don't use too much because I feel like it can get out of, out of control. Um, not unlike my videos. So there you go. So last thing of note to highlight on the, uh, these guys here is about maybe 50% of the way up. I use a little bit of Stormhost silver or Runefang steel or whatever brighter steel type of, uh, color you got. Um, doesn't have to have steel in the name, but yeah, basically, I mean, I've seen people doing non-metallic metals where this is like a, a mixture, I think of white, I'm going to go with white and yellow. I wasn't paying too much attention because I, glazed over after a little while realizing how awesome they are and how much I have to go. But you know, the journey, oh boy, no, don't get, don't get pretend philosophical again. Point is, you can see it going on and it, all this does, this is very much like Liberator Gold again in that if you use too much of it, it can, it can turn this, this uh, piece, piece quick. But like that I feel is enough. You got the dark part of the spine, um, a couple of different golds on their way up and then just silver at the very tops. So, or the, um, uh, 50, 50, 50 to 75% up. There you go. So there you go. That was, uh, pretty simple. That's for all the golds. The, the head is a simple, just outline of the, the, uh, the gold in liberator. Nope. Outline of the gold. You know what? It's right here. There you go. I did an outline in liberator gold of, um, that piece there. I don't know why I cannot think of the name. Apparently, trying to do a really quick segment but anyways so now i'm going to go with just uh the very tips maybe in a little bit of that um gray highlight and then maybe over here where he has a little bit of uh his head sticks or got dented or something maybe maybe on the point right there all right so that's basically face complete uh other than the door in yellow we're going to add over here so so there you go that's what it's going to look like when you're getting shot with either like 95 shots or one just a really strong one. So there you go. All right. So the last step we are going to add here, um, and then put it all together is the Dorn yellow. Now the Dorn yellow is, um, very, very watered down and you apply it over thousands and thousands of tiny little lines. At least that's how I'm doing it. If you have a better way of doing it, by all means, please share that in the comments because it does take a really long time. So, but, when you're done with it from this far away, it does have a, like I said, a really nice glow to it. Um, so these are done by, um, they're, they're the, all, all of the colors, right? You got Caliban green in the, in the depths. I'm going to go back here and line this later with some, uh, Nolan oil to make sure it looks really, really dark, but you got Caliban green up to warp stone, up to moot, up to door yellow. And then every place that there's a color transition, I did a, um, 
I, I kind of left a water a watered down uh, version of the paint, and then I came there with the next color and just kind of like blended the edges back and forth. But you do that for as much time as it takes to get it to where you're happy with. Similar, uh, this is the Goss Destructor once again. The two centers here are basically just Dorn Yellow. I was originally, um, they're a little bit of Dorn Yellow and a little bit of Moot Green, but I'd say they, uh, they uh, favor the yellow side of, of life here. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm happy with how the glow look came out. I think most of that is attributed to not these being one solid color, but the having the, the, um, the bands here just on the outside of that last band or having these these canisters whatever they are on the very outsides of the bands here you know yellow moot green warp stone glow all blended together and then of course adding in your little dots of dorn yellow throughout there uh this is the side that faces the public so now i'm going to go paint that uh the uh couple of hoses right you got hoses up here same exact way i'm doing everything else thin down back and forth between moot green and dorn yellow and then also, if you have to go even further up to the edge again, it is the Moot Green with Warpstone Glow. Um, did a little bit of highlight of Moot Green on the outsides of all these little circles, and then dotted the centers with that Dorn Yellow. Dotted inside this canister here, or um, I don't know what you call that, maybe a coil, maybe? I don't know. Um, whatever you would call this, I, did, I put a dot in there just to make it kind of look like it's glowing a little bit. Obviously, a nice, sm as smooth as I could see gradient. I'm sure when I look at pictures, I'll be disappointed in myself. Um, both sides painted, of course. Oh my gosh, did you see that? Right there. Hang on, I gotta show you that, that's amazing. So I'm taking all my time to paint this. I completely missed that entire inner of the hose. Oh, I would have been so embarrassed if someone were to uh, pick up the model and go, yeah, but anyways, that's not the point. The point is then, this piece here, so the way that I did the door yellow on this, I'm very happy with. Uh, I did the center, just painted the whole center uh, yellow and actually did a, added a little bit of white to the very center of this piece to make it look that much brighter. Um, that's a mixture, I think, of, of yellow and white. But again, it's just that, that idea of going back and forth when you're blending the two colors together. That's the same thing with there. So white is blended in with yellow. Yellow gets blended in with green. Green gets blended in with a darker green, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to the edge. So, uh, but yes, over here, what I want to show you real quick is just that I was doing... Um, you know, kind of, kind of going back and just adding a little bit of extra dabs everywhere or every once in a while, just to, just to get the color you want. This is going to take a while. This is like the, um, what do you call it? The edge highlighting of the blues on the Space Marines. This is what, for me, takes the longest portion of all these Necrons because, you know, I do so much back and forth with it because I want it to make, as soon as I, it's like once you learn how to do it, you get uh, addicted to it. Um, and then you don't do it as good the second time, so then you spend hours and hours and hours trying to figure out how you did it so well the first time uh, to the point of where you just kind of go insane. And eventually at some point you'll just go, you know what, it's good enough. But here comes the heater. Real quick, uh, similar to Tyranids, I'm going to just take my brush, which is we uh, weathered down, watered down, and I'm gonna pull towards the edge so that the, most of the water and paint collects on that edge that I want to be uh, up against the glowing portion of that orb and this if it looks like too much um, I'm trying to just get barely the edges of This to, so it, it pops out a lot and if it looks like too much to you you can always go back um, and uh, And clean that up with moot green in the same exact way that we've done everything else where you know you have a layer of your yellow this is the point uh, when I was filming it earlier that I noticed I didn't have my microphone on but um, so there you go. Come back in here, probably this way, and uh, and clean that line up. And now begin hours and hours of going back and forth until you're happy with the look. But actually, I'm kind of happy with that look, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Finish the rest, put it all together, finish the other gun, rim the base with black, and then you know what? I'm gonna do a nice a nice long 360 and. Enjoy that view and, uh, and close out this video and hopefully post it uh, before 100 days go by of, uh, of not having anything new out. Yes, Heater, I know you're on. I can hear you. And I'm thankful even though you don't heat the garage.
And so now we come to the part of the video where again, I get to say, hey, thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Generic YouTube greeting here. Um, but uh, I really enjoyed painting this model. I, I took a little while uh, off of painting, not because I, I felt like I was getting, you know, uh, writer's block or painter's block. I needed a muse or something like that. It was simply a video game I play, had an update and I got stuck into that. And then I ended up uh, starting to work some more hours in general. So, uh, you know, life happened. So I got, you know, pulled away from this for a little bit. And so I actually have another model that I am maybe a third of the way through. So maybe my next video won't take uh, 60 plus days to come out. I'm pretty sure it'll be uh, a little bit shorter than that. So uh, once again, if you made it this far into the video, Thank you. I always enjoy uh, putting out content that anyone will watch and turns out uh, almost double the amount of people that I expected to uh, subscribe have now subscribed. So thank you uh, if you're one of those people. And if not, hey, thank you anyway, because you made it this far into the video. And I know that uh, they're not the most traditional of painting videos. So if you did like what you see, once again, I'll say it and I probably said it before, but now I'm saying it again. I filled this outro like seven times, so I don't know which outro it actually made it into, but like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. So long.